And now, Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger, and I have another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. March 17, 1872 started out like any other day in the mining camp of Gold Hill, Nevada. Then suddenly, that most dreaded of all sounds, the fire whistle. Rescuers are bringing men up from the blazing depths of the Eureka Mine as we take you into our story of... What a little runt. You must be hard up for help in that mine. He's a new man. Just came over from Silver City. Oh. Oh. Well, you won't have to replace him for a little while anyway. Ain't you gonna wait till he comes too? What for? So he can thank you. Took a lot of nerve volunteering to go down in that shaft. Especially your being a woman. When people are in trouble, being a woman ain't no different than being a man. Say, mister, would you tell me which one of these shacks belongs to Big... Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I thought you were mister. Would you be Big Liz? I would. Gosh. Well, I'm the fellow that you dragged out of that mine last night. And I, I came to thank you. No need to thank me. You just happened to be the first one I stumbled over. Oh, but just the same, you did save my life. And I wanted to give you a little token of my gratitude. What is it? Well, open it and see. It, uh, it ain't very much, but uh, I thought maybe you could use it when you sort of dress up. I don't sort of dress up. Oh, well, what I really meant was uh, when you ain't wearing them dots. I'm a prospector. I'm doing a man's work, so I wear a man's clothes. Oh, well, uh, that puts a different complexion on things. What size britches do you wear? Huh? Oh, oh nothing personal, ma'am. Uh, I just meant... Uh, I thought maybe I could trade it in for a pair of witches. Your size. No, thank you kindly. I kind of think maybe I might keep this. Been so long since anybody gave me a present. Uh, kind of nice to get one, even if I ain't got any use for it. Hey. <clears throat> would you like to sit a spell and have a glass of water or a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, that, that, that would be very nice, if it's not too much trouble. If it was too much trouble, I wouldn't ask you. No, sir. No more working underground for me. That fire last night was the third one I've been in, and I've had my belly... I mean, uh, I've had my fill. I'm getting me a job in the fresh air and sunshine. Got anything in mind? Not yet, but uh, I'll find something. How about teaming up with me? Prospecting. With you? Yeah. I'm getting kind of tired talking to myself and eating moan vittles. A woman prospector's kind of limited when it comes to teaming up. There ain't any other women worth their salt. And the men, they kind of get ideas. I could handle you. 
Well, I don't think it'd be necessary. But uh, I don't know anything about uh, prospecting. Well, here's a chance to earn while you learn. I'll furnish the grub and equipment and give you 25% of what we find. How about it? Well, I... Uh... Good. Get out of here now and pack your things. We're going to leave at daylight. Oh, what's your name? Oh, uh, uh, Scrubs. Elbert Scrubs. But, but everybody calls me Scrubby. Scrubby? <laughs> sure fits you. Scrubby. Bacon sure smells good. There's nothing like a good walk to make a man feel hungry. How long you been a prospector, Liz? Close on to 15 years. How come you took it up? Well, I had to make a living. Yeah, you, you could have opened a boarding house or a, or a restaurant or something. Too many people. How come you hate people, Liz? I don't hate them. I just ain't got any use for them, that's all. Most of them, anyway. Especially men. How come you hate men, Liz? Just full of questions, ain't you? Now put your food where your mouth is and let me eat and see. <laughs> Gold again. Fool's gold again. I guess I'm the fella they named up Fool's Gold after, Liz. I ain't never gonna make no prospector. I ain't gonna bring you no luck either. Shucks, don't get so discouraged. Why, a week ago, you couldn't even walk. Yeah, but I ain't doing you no good, Liz. All I do is eat your grub and make your disposition worse than it was looking after me. But I like looking after you. You do? But try and learn a little faster. Just beats me how anybody can live so long and know so little. Sometimes I wonder about that myself, Liz. <laughs> You? It is a little strong. Well, I spilled this tobacco on the horse blanket. I guess I got some hair in it. Speaking of hair, Liz, how did you used to wear yours when you was a woman? Ah, oh, lots of different ways. I think the way I liked it best was parted in the middle, and I had two coils right down here at my... Hey, what are you asking me that for? I was just thinking. That kind of thinking don't come under the head of prospecting. I'll bet you were a real good-looking gal. I wasn't the worst looking. Did you ever have a hankering to put on dresses again? I never give it a thought. I'll bet you'd still be real handsome. You know, when we get back to town, I'm going to buy you a dress. You ain't going to do no such a thing and stop getting so personal. I don't pry into your past. Well, I ain't got no past. And you ain't gonna have no future if you don't mind your own business. Now I'm going to bed. Hey, 
Where did you find this? Oh, oh, wait now. I, I didn't say it was gold. I just threw it away. Where did you find it? Why, why, why right up there. This will last say better than any silver ore they found in these parts of years. We've hit it. Scrubby, we've hit it! <laughs> Where is Oh, excuse me. I got so excited, I just forgot who I was. <laughs> Yes, so fellas, as soon as I picked up that chunk of ore, I knew it was a real thing. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. No, sir. I just rolled it down the hill so Big Liz would find it. And when she spotted it, she got so excited she almost split a seam. Scrubby, she said, we've got it. And you know something? She was right. That mining syndicate is paying us almost a hundred thousand dollars. I suppose you and Liz will get married now, huh? Well, we, we ain't never talked about that. Of course, I, I wouldn't have no objections if she'd take off them pants. Both of us wearing them wouldn't be so good. <laughs> Set them up again, Rusty. I'll pay you as soon as Liz gets in on that three o'clock stage from San Francisco. <laughs> Gosh almighty, it's three o'clock now. <laughs> You just can't see them, that's all. For gosh sakes, you're not going to wear them both. I figured it was better until I got used to skirts again. Oh. Uh, did, did you put over the deal? Signed, sealed, and delivered. How much did you get? A hundred thousand even. Twenty-five thousand is in Wells Fargo Bank in your name. Oh, gosh, Liz. Let's go in and wash the dust out of my throat. Liz, you can't go in there. Since when? Since you became a lady. You've got to use the family entrance. I plumb forgot there was one. <laughs> Champagne, Rusty. This calls for fancy drinking. Sure thing. <laughs> well, here's to you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Why, well, I haven't been called Elizabeth in years. Well, nobody's gonna call you anything else from now on. Fellows, to Elizabeth. Hey, I'd like to join you in a toast to the lady, if I may. Seeing me after 15 years is too much for my wife. Your wife? You're married to Liz? 
death do us part, as the minister says. that way. They're liable to get the impression that you weren't glad to see me. If there was any doubt in your mind, I wasn't. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm really very happy to see you. I can't tell you how pleased I was. I read that article in the Denver paper. Especially the part about striking it rich. Yes, I've wondered what became of you. Many times. Yeah, every time you were broke. Same old Elizabeth. But it's good to be back together again. This time I'm going to stick. As long as it's worth your while. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go on a second honeymoon. Second? Then we'll buy a nice little house in Denver, or Frisco if you prefer. Servants, horses, carriage, all the comforts. Yes, sir, this time we're going to make a go of our marriage, like we're supposed to. Work and share together. I work and you share. All right. I'll give you your share right now. $10,000 if you'll clear out. 10000 According to law, I'm entitled to half what you got from that sale. And according to the bombastic bragging of your pipsqueak partner, you have in the neighborhood of 75000 all right. I'll give you half. Depriving myself of your companionship should be worth at least uh, another 25. Would you put that in writing? Any time, any place. It's a deal. No, no, Liz. You can't do it. Well, it seems your little partner was listening. You ain't gonna get a bit of her money. She's gotta keep it so she won't have to go on working. Between the two, I prefer to work. I'll meet you at my lawyer's office first thing in the morning. The price has just gone up 20000 I haven't got that much. He has. No, the deal is off. You ain't going to get none of his money. Well, I'd think it over, if I were you. I'm offering you both a good proposition. Oh, uh, don't wait up for me, Elizabeth. I'll probably stay at the Silver Nuggets. Why do you put up with him, Liz? Oh, he's my lawful husband. Though he never was a husband to me. You can get a divorce. No, I tried it once. He was too smart for me. I couldn't prove nothing on him. Oh, I just can't see no way out of this mess, Scrubby. received a message from the hotel saying that you had something of interest for me. That's right. I got a business proposition. Come inside. Sit down. Why, you little... 
Look out. I got a very nervous trigger finger. What's the idea? I said I had a business proposition for you. All you gotta do is sign that paper. I'll sign nothing. You ain't getting out of here until you've signed that paper, setting her free. All right. We'll just sit here. I haven't got the patience. There's a keg of blasting powder under that table. Either you sign that paper, or I'll light the fuse and blow you to kingdom come. What happens to you? I go with you. <laughs> you haven't got the guts. I have for Liz. I don't think so. Papers right in front of you. You've got less than a minute to change your mind. So have you. Time's getting short. You'll put it out. What in the name of common sense? Now, what's this all about? He was trying to scare me into signing away my rights. You were going to blow the two of you up? Yeah, that, that was the idea. He wouldn't have gone through with it. <laughs> he hasn't the nerve. Well, I have. Keep him covered, Scrubby. The three of us will sit this one out. We might just as well go up and smoke as the way we are. powder keg, but you didn't fool me. Oh, oh, it's not empty. It's the real thing, look. Real thing? Right. From that time on, he wore the pants of the family.